One of my favorite things in the world to do is watch Friends. I know it's been off for years and years. It's not even around, but I still find myself binge watching old episodes. And I was thinking about this today and thinking it's the predictability of the friends in the circle, right? You have Chandler with his quirkiness, Monica with her type A of just everything has to be so neat and tidy and organized. It's Phoebe's ability to make you laugh at her silly songs. Ross always comes in with those smart comments and Joey and him and his food, like it is just so hilarious. And of course, Rachel, she just brings everybody together and it's just such this beautiful, cohesive team of people. And it's why I wanted to come on and share with you today that I have an opportunity for you to find your friends in the content creation space. So if you are thinking about creating your first or your next digital course, I don't want you to miss this opportunity because Amy Porterfield just opened the doors for registration for her course, Confident Bootcamp. And I'm actually offering a special bonus for anyone that registers for the course. Course Confident Bootcamp through my special link. So I want you to go to crystalprofit.com forward slash Amy dash bootcamp to register. That's crystalprofit.com forward slash Amy dash bootcamp. And what you're going to find when you get there is I have this special bonus private podcast series. It's called Money Mindset for Creators. So I want you to go register for Amy's bootcamp download the podcast and immediately start listening to it because what this training is set up to do is to help you get your mind right about monetizing your content, making money so that you can fuel your content creation dreams. So go to crystalprofit.com forward slash Amy dash bootcamp to register for course confident. And I cannot wait for you to find your friends and find the people that will be there for you. Do you see what I did there? Yeah. Nice little friends segue connection. Go to crystalprofit.com forward slash Amy dash bootcamp. And I cannot wait to see you inside. Okay. Let's get into today's episode. It's not always fair for me to say I'm so excited to talk about today's topic, right? Because it feels like it gets watered down if you say it every single time you're creating a piece of content. But y'all, this is what I love to do. And I am really genuinely excited about today's topic because I was doing a live stream. If you don't know this, I host a weekly live show that's every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Central. I go live on YouTube and our Facebook group, on LinkedIn and on our Facebook page. Like there's a bunch of places where I host a live stream every week. And what I will typically do is I start talking about one specific topic. Usually I will go a little bit more into depth on a recent piece of content that was just launched, which is typically the Tuesday episode that goes out on the Profit Podcast. So you'll see me talking about the podcast episode that's airing. And then I open the floor to questions. And I had such a great question that I know many of you are facing or have faced in the past, and I wanted to address it today. So the question was related to how do you come back if you've taken a break from your content? And this person uh, in particular was asking about taking a break from her podcast, but this is totally related to any type of break that you've taken from your content, from your YouTube channel, if it's emailing your list, if it's posting on social media or anything that is related to content creation, we are talking about how to get back into it if you've taken a break, if you're trying to start a new season, or you are just trying to get the ball rolling again with your content, you are going to find today's episode super, super helpful. So let's get right to it. 
Welcome to The Profit Podcast, where we teach you how to start, launch, and market your content with confidence. I'm your host, Crystal Profit, and I'm so excited that you're here. Thanks for hanging out with me today, because if you've been trying to figure out the world of content creation, this is the show that will help be your time-saving shortcut. So let's get right to it, shall we? So here's how this is going to work. I took the audio clip from the question, from the live stream that we had, and I'm going to play that for you because if I try to recreate the exact same thing that I said in the live stream, I would butcher it so badly, and I don't want to do that. And I also want to show you that this is another way that you can repurpose content. So there's a few different reasons why the format of today's show is the way that it is. One, I always want to be an example of what it's like to test and try and experiment with your content, but also I want to show you how you can repurpose something. So you can see at the very beginning, I talked about why today's topic is relevant and I kind of teased a little bit about the format is going to be different than what you're typically used to. And now I'm telling you, it's very meta today. I know I get this, I see it, I hear it, all the things. But what I'm sharing with you today is a clip that I downloaded from StreamYard, which is what I use to go live on YouTube and Facebook and all the places. And I downloaded the audio file to import into today's podcast episode. So shout out again to Leah, our friend from the UK. I took your question and I added a little bit to what we were talking about on the live stream. Like I just wanted really, it was such a great question about how to get back into your content. And I wanted to share it in today's episode. So listen up and I will be back whenever it is over. Leah, so happy to see you, our friend from the UK. I hope that you're doing well. I love seeing your face. Mm. Being consistent is key. However, I took a break and it extended into months. Any advice about staying the course long term with podcasting? Yes. So I have, let me see. Let's go back here. Leah, I have a great video for you. So let's look at Podfade. This is, um, so it's what is pod fade, how to avoid it. Go watch this video um, because it talks about why pod fade happens. Like, why does it happen in the first place? And like you said, it's it's something like, it's usually someone taking a break and then they don't know how to get back into it or they're afraid they're gonna say the wrong thing to come back. And honestly, I, I look at, It's kind of like if you're on a fitness routine and you're working out, you're working out, you're working out, and then the holidays come. This happens to me every year, every single year. Either we're traveling or, you know, we're just so busy with, you know, the kids finishing up school. We have to go see this person and that person. And it's just like, ah, and maybe I don't get to work out as much as I wanted to. So when January comes around, and I'm sure I'm not the only one in this, It's hard. It is hard to get back in to that same routine of eating healthy and working out and like making it part of my daily habits again. But it takes that initial commitment of saying, I want to do this long term. And honestly, I think it just comes down to being very, very honest with yourself too. Do you want to keep doing it long term? You know, is it Is there a purpose that's bigger than I have to show up again and record this again and I don't know what to talk about? And I'll be really honest. There's a lot of people in our community that they end up changing things. Maybe it's the format of their show. Like they will have an experience of pod fade or they take a break or they finish a season of their podcast and then they come back and it's a totally different show. And I invite that. I love it because what you've done is you've already created something and you've molded it into, okay, I think that this is what it's supposed to be, but then you find some frustrations or some snags in your workflow or your processes where you're just like, this stresses me out. I don't like this piece of it. Pay attention to that. So I would get really clear on what you loved about your show. Maybe we'll call the first part, the first season, what you did, you loved it so much, but there were pieces of it that you're like, 
but I didn't like this thing. And I didn't really love that thing. And this thing stressed me out, but this thing was a lot of fun. And write it down. Like, what are those things? Open a Google Doc, grab a pen and paper, and write down what you loved about it, what you didn't love about it, your frustrations, your pain points, because that will help you get clearer on what you want to do moving forward. So maybe you needed to take a break to realize, and I did this too, y'all. This is what happened. This is how I am doing the content that I have today is I got frustrated creating what I was creating in the beginning. I had the Rookie Life podcast, which I later rebranded to what I have today. You can go back and listen to all of my original episodes. I cringe when I think about sending people back to the beginning because they're pretty cringeworthy, a lot of them. But if I hadn't have created those episodes, I wouldn't have gotten better. I said that weird. I would not have gotten better and be at the level of creating content as I am today without those beginning episodes. So something to think about. I if you if you want to get back into it and you're like, no, I want to do this long term, I recommend ripping off the band-aid and setting a date to when you're going to return to it. You don't have to just be like, okay, I'm going to return to it and start back again tomorrow. But I do recommend saying, okay, by April 1st, I'm going to start posting consistently again. Think of it like a new launch of your show. And that can help you get in that mind frame of I'm going to be consistent and I'm, I really want to do this. So great question. Yeah. Thank you, Crystal, for all you share. Always helpful. I'm so happy to see your face. This is awesome. You are so welcome. Yeah. Great question. Let me know if y'all have any other questions. Thank you for your encouragement. You are welcome. Um, let's see. Monique says I can do that. Awesome. Great question, Leah. Yes. I think, and again, Leah, you're, you're not alone in this feeling of like, I, I took a step back and now it's been a long time and I don't, I don't really know how to get back into it. Um, yeah, exactly what we talked about, but I'm glad to see that other people are resonating with that as well. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's format and you really found some information in today's episode that can inspire you to really go through and think about what is it like to jump back into your content. I'm going to link to the things that I mentioned, the resources, the video about Podfade. You have to go watch it. It's very helpful in understanding why this happens, how to avoid it, and the things that you can do to make sure that you don't find yourself in that same situation of feeling burned out and overwhelmed. And I'm going to link to a few other resources in the show notes. So go to crystalprofit.com forward slash episode 341 for all the different things. And if you want to be featured in an upcoming episode, make sure that you can submit. I actually am going to link to it in the show notes. You can go to our pod inbox page, which is where people have submitted questions. I'm sure you heard our recent episode where Jean submitted her audio file. And this question from Leah came from a live stream that we did. I actually didn't warn her ahead of time that I was going to take this clip but it was just so good. It was one of those things that anytime, and this is another, everything today is super meta with what we're talking about, but anytime you recognize as a content creator that the question one person has is likely something that there are other people asking as well, ask yourself, how can I turn this into a piece of content that I can share more widespread than just in this one place? Because I already answered Leah's question, right? I had already addressed her question. I had served her in that moment on our live stream. But afterwards, I really felt very compelled to download the audio file and say, you know what, this needs to be shared on the podcast because maybe my podcast audience doesn't catch on my live streams or go back and watch old YouTube videos that I have so I want to bring the message to my audience in a way that I know will serve them best. And I'm not going to keep repeating over and over again how meta all this is, talking about repurposing content and showing you how I'm actually making this process work. But I think it's really important that you cater your content to the platform that you are using. 
So do you notice here how I didn't take the entire live stream? Y'all, this live stream was over, over an hour and 10 minutes. It was a long live stream, which that happens. My live streams tend to go pretty long, but I didn't just say, oh, here's my latest live stream. Go listen to it. No, because y'all, sometimes the live streams, they're a little bit, they're rough around the edges. If you're, you're listening to this and you've watched one of my live streams, you're nodding along and you're smiling really big because you're like, yeah, it's usually a hot mess when Crystal's on live because it's live. Things happen. You're real. You're raw. You stumble on your words. Or I had to, this is so embarrassing, but I'm gonna tell you anyways, I kept having a running nose and I had a tissue and I was like, okay, like I, I can feel that my nose is running, but I'm trying to talk and look into the camera, but I'm gonna go ahead and sneak a tissue and wipe my nose at the same time. Like live streaming is a totally different monster than being behind the microphone. There's no camera on me right now. And I feel a lot more loose and connected and I can plan and calculate exactly the things that I want to say. But I think it's important that you experiment with your content. And if you have an amazing live stream, whether it's by yourself or with a guest, then take, to, take into consideration how you can reuse that content and share it on your podcast or in a YouTube video or in your weekly email newsletter. There's a lot of different ways that you can repurpose content, but I hope today's episode encourages you to think outside the box. Once again, thank you so much, Leah, for being there live, and I wish you well in getting back on the horse and starting to produce your podcast content. Please reach out if you have any more questions. But that's all I have for you today. So again, the resources for today's episode are going to be at crystalprofit.com forward slash episode 341. And as always, remember, keep it up. We all have to start somewhere. Hey, Profit Podcast listeners, thanks for sticking around to a little bit after the episode to hear this special message because I want to hear from you. We are starting a new segment called Fan Mail Shoutouts, and I want to hear from you and I want to hear your questions. What do you want to know? What questions have you been dying to ask me? So here's how to make this happen. Go to the app where you're listening to this podcast right now. Go there. I'll wait a second. Okay. Now, once you're there, you're going to see a hyperlink at the top of the episode description that says, send Crystal a text message. And that's all I want you to do. Send me a text. It could be casual, informal. It could be totally anonymous. Or if you want, you can include your name and the name of your podcast or content, wherever you are creating. And I will give you a special shout out in an upcoming episode. So again, go to the show notes for where you're listening to this episode right now. And it will say, send Crystal a text message. And I cannot wait to hear from you and give you a shout out in an upcoming segment of fan mail shout outs.